Hey everyone, we are, they're just setting up for the meeting, uh, should be getting started fairly soon. Got the usual suspects right in front of us in black is Maura McCarthy, executive director of the firm on Park Conservancy. Uh, behind her, facing us, is Allison, who will undoubtedly be making the presentation. She is the senior project manager for the Fairmont Park Conservancy. Uh, a reminder that our parks department basically farms all the design work and all capital projects move through the Fairmont Park Conservancy. Instead of building up our parks department and its staff to better support our park system, we basically pay others to profit and grow. And we'll do a The hall is filling up. We are in the basketball gym at City Life Church. Pretty good attendance so far. I'll take you guys for a little walk. So we've got lots of renders. Oh, yes, more renders of the fields. So these are the five basketball courts. This area here is what we currently know as the Meadows Picnic Grove. And all those trees are going to be gone. You see that they're planting a lot of trees in their stead. There are gonna be tiny trees, two and a half inch caliper. And quite frankly, these are planted very, very densely because the tree bill requires that they replace the trees uh, per inch. Every inch they remove, they have to replace with either a new tree or pay money. Let's just take a look down here. Oh look, they already made a poster for the Inquirer editorial uh, this morning uh, in, in full support of the plan. Interestingly, the editorial seemed to miss a few key words, uh, including artificial turf and um, clear cutting, no mention of the clear cutting over 400 trees to be clear cut in this phase alone, thousands throughout the meadows, as well as over 60 heritage trees which are protected by the tree bill. So here we see, so here's Bel Air Manor, and this here is, these are, this is the Meadows Picnic Grove, um, that we, we use all the time as a great lawn. And uh, the existing rec center is up here. That's gonna be demolished. This is where those magnificent red maples are. All heritage trees, all currently protected by the tree bill, they're gonna be removed um, to make way for these basketball courts that are gonna be surrounded with fencing, what you don't see in this render is all of these fields are going to be locked. All of these fields are going to have fences and gates and 70 foot tall uh, stadium lighting. So once all these trees are clear cut, 
that's going to very much impact the surrounding neighborhoods. Packer Park residents already know um, how bright the stadium lights can be. And, you know, imagine if you've got that kind of lighting down the street from you uh, with, um, without the stadium. Shira representing. Hello. Hello. Oh, doesn't it just look so sterile? So, yeah, the view from Bel Air Manor looking south. Um, yeah, all these trees, you know, it's going to be a decade before, let's see, how tall are they? Two decades before they're even that size. And look at that density. And, of course, no mention of the artificial turf. And this is the Picnic Grove looking east. Um, where this is smack in the middle, we've got their picnic rope. All right, all it's filling up. I like love the public. Trees, not pizzas. Hell yeah. No signs allowed, so we've got some creative folks that came wearing messages. this woman is, but uh, we've had some scuffles. this meeting, so this is an RCO meeting, it's a responsible community organization, uh, it's being co-hosted by Friends of FDR and the Packer Park Civic Association. Um, there will be a vote at the end of the meeting once the presentation is complete and the 10, yes, only 10 speakers make their uh, two-minute uh, testimonies. The two organizations will um, hold a vote. They've handed out these tickets to, um, to members. I'm a member of the Friends of FDR group, and uh, we will vote whether to approve whether we believe that um, Fairmont Park Conservancy and Parks should be allowed uh, a, an exception and granted the right to clear cut these 60-some heritage trees. It's um, 48 heritage trees and another 16, I believe, that they consider to be uh, dead or diseased and um, and those those trees don't count which is of course ridiculous because anyone who knows woodlands knows that that dead and dying trees are hugely important uh, shelter and uh, you know many species 
rely on that dead wood for uh, habitat, for shelter. Um, so the tree bill certainly has some massive holes in it. Number one being the fact that anyone can simply apply for an exception and uh, clear cut the heritage trees that are protected by the tree bill. Anissa here, Anissa George, she just wrote a fantastic in-depth article for Grid Magazine. Highly recommend you all check it out. Hopefully this will get started soon. And over here we've got the commissioner, parks commissioner, and Maura McCarthy. In red is Barbara Capozzi. She is the president of the Packer Park Civic Association, as well as co-president of the Friends of FDR uh, group. <laughs> I think the delay stems from the fact that they need to uh, check in all the members and verify that membership is current and give out a ballot before the proceedings can start. Hopefully we're starting soon. Jumpstart and support the many different uses and users in our park. 
So, and also thanks to, of course, the Fairmount Park Conservancy and the City Department of Parks and Rec, as well, for jump-starting the heavy investment that has and will be placed in FDR Park. I just heard from some people this morning that the notice to the reserve and villas went out this morning. Uh, the property manager did not do her duty. I have to communicate with her. She has to communicate with you. That is most unfortunate. However, if you were a member of the Friends of FDR Park or a member of the Packer Park Civic Association, you probably got five notices for this meeting. So we really urge you to sign up at your respective tables or both to at least get on the email list. You don't have to be a member to get on the email list so that you'll find out all about the next meeting, so be many, and the free happenings that we have in the park and issues of importance. We can disagree without being disagreeable, and I hope that's the sentiment tonight. The Friends of FDR, party volunteers that we are, support the overall investment in FDR Park. We want to keep hearing from all of our many users to ensure that your feedback to the Parks and Rec and Fairmount Park Conservancy is heard. We're here to listen. I have been collecting statements. People have been emailing me all week, and if you want to Email tomorrow if you don't get to speak, that's fine. Uh, they'll all be copied and given to the respective departments. We'll continue to advocate on behalf of all the park users, but know that the final decision is not ours. In a perfect world, we would have world-class sports fields for all ages and big, gorgeous trees at the same time. And they can co coexist. This is not a perfect world, unfortunately. So it's a compromise that makes everybody unhappy. So Fairback Park Conservancy and Department of Rent will answer all your questions about the master plan and about this particular phase of it. Remember that the full build-out of the original plan will take over a decade, so please stay connected with us. We only have two hours, so let's get started. And a few words from Lindsay Scanner, keep your welcome president and friends of FDR. Um, 
going to close the slide that shows who's who. Hi, everybody. My name is Mara McCarthy. I'm the CEO of the Fairmount Park Conservancy, and I am here with my dear colleague. Good evening. I'm Orlando Rendon, Acting Commissioner for Parks and Recreation. And we just wanted to make it clear to everybody that we're here in partnership, um, not just with each other, but with all of you in the community. We know that there are a lot of different voices, a lot of different ways of thinking about public space. And part of the challenge and beauty of Parks and Rec's mission is trying to blend those voices, right? So everybody gets the things they need most. Uh, but it is important for everybody to know that we're two different entities, right? So the Fairmount Park Conservancy is a nonprofit partner of Parks and Recreation. We're not the city of Philadelphia. We work at Parks and Recreation's behest. Parks and Recreation is the landowner, right? So all of these parks that we love in the city of Philadelphia, 10,000 plus acres fall under the jurisdiction of Parks and Recreation. Did you want to say anything else about that? It's a lot of land. It's a lot of land, but there's a lot more to be dealt with. And as uh, Mara had mentioned, we hired the Conservancy to do a great job and take on a great task in terms of trying to turn FDR, the lakes, into the gym of the city. There's a lot of room, there's a lot of accommodations, and they've spent hours, countless hours, to ensure that they are accommodating everyone and anyone at this park, whether it comes to fields, for young people, for youth development, safe places for them to go, uh, whether it's ecological, we have something for everyone there. And we wanna make sure that it's not just for the users there, it's not just for the community, but the city as a whole. So we're proud of the work that they have taken in that lead, uh, we're proud of your leadership, and thank you so much for moving this project forward. Thanks so much, Orlando. So now I'm going to turn it over to our Chief Project Officer, Allison Schachter, uh, the woman who probably knows more about FDR Park than any other person in the city of Philadelphia at this point. Um, Allison, thank you very much. Here you go. All right. Thank you, Mara and Orlando, and thank you to everybody here. Can you all hear me okay in the back? Great. All right, I'm going to try to drive this computer and connect with you all. Okay, I think that's it. Second try. All right, so my name is Allison Schapker. I'm the Chief Project Officer at the Fairmount Park Conservancy. I joined the Conservancy in 2018, just as this project was getting started. And when we began this project in 2018, this is the FDR that we had. We had a park where 140 acres was a golf course that was literally underwater and financially underwater. We had a 40 acre site that had been the place where construction waste over the years was dumped and just created a big hill on the low spot of the site. We had a city where there are increasing numbers of families living near this park um, through millennials moving in, through immigrants coming to our city. We had a golf course that was losing participants as recreation cha trends changed around the country. And then finally we had the sense that South Philadelphia was growing. We saw this through the use of the Broad Street subway. We saw this through the, um, the demand that we heard from families, from teams, from coaches, that they needed places to play. And finally, we had a park where those important amenities that serve folks were underwater due to hotter, wetter futures. But let's go back a little bit further and talk about FDR Park before it was even a park. In order to understand this place, it's really important to understand the history of water. And so what you see on this image, the dashed line is the old Hollander uh, Creek that cut through the park. The park's border, think about that like the rim of a bathtub. Our park sits low, the land around it is high. And if you look at this image, the areas in pink are the areas that are in the floodplain. These are also the areas that when it is high tide on the Delaware River, that groundwater is actually sitting on the surface of the park. So you may have seen this when you go to the park and it is wet, but you know that it hasn't rained. And that's because there is a high tide. If, you, if you're familiar with the South, it's called a king tide. And these are the couple times a year where we have extremely high tides. They're happening more and more frequently and that water is sitting on the surface more and more often. 
And then finally, if you look at the edge of the park, there's little white areas at the top. Those are the areas that stay high and dry. It's really important to think about this image because this really became the theme for the development of the plan. So you can see, we had this 140-acre golf course. It represents the opportunity to reinterpret 140 acres to meet the needs of 21st century Philadelphians. This is an image of the golf course in 2020. And you can see how it struggles with flooding. So we had demographics that were changing. We had the needs that were changing in recreational trends. We had the history and reality of water. But the final piece of this planning process was our um, community engagement effort. And so over 12 months, across five different languages, we spoke to over 3,000 people. That community engagement has continued. It has continued through open houses, it has continued through walk and talks, and it has continued through countless meetings about this project. So what we heard from those planning priorities um, were a range of different things. You know, everybody has their priority at the park. Everybody has the thing that they love to do most. Everybody has the thing that they care about the most. But FDR Park serves all of us. And at 350 acres, it is our job to build the park for all of us for the 21st century. And so I want to share with you, um, this is a summary from the initial planning effort of what we heard from people. And so you can see that there are a ton of elements that the plan provides, but the two that we're really going to talk about tonight are the multi-purpose fields. Over 629 folks asked us for those fields. And the other is basketball. I want to bring this up because it's really important. We missed on our surveys, on our initial engagement basketball, because it wasn't already in the park. And it was the number one writing request that we heard from folks. Was this park should have basketball. 2098 so excursion. So where all of this landed is a diagram that you can see in front of you. This park basically says, all right, we know we're gonna have a hotter weather future. Let's make 200 acres in the middle of the park function as the blue green sponge. So this area that you see in blue, the marsh, the lakes, the wetlands, this is the area that we're gonna build in a way to function as habitat. We're gonna build it to allow it to flood. And we're gonna load that area up with the trails, the biking, and the um, natural experiences that we know people really wanna see in this park. So that's 200 acres. The balance of the park, we are going to regrade, so that's the areas of pink, to bring it up out of the floodplain so it stays high and dry as we have these hotter and warmer futures. And the way we're gonna do that is by taking that 40 acre hill in the southwest corner of the park where you see the word wetlands, that used to be that 40 foot tall hill. We're gonna scoop that dirt up and we're gonna move it onto the old golf course fairways. In moving that dirt, we're restoring the original drainage point of this park, the historic low point of the natural areas and we're creating an active urban edge where we can put the programming, the parking, the fields, the courts, the playgrounds, so that people can get to those activities and use them regardless of the tide and the weather. So this is what we land on. Um, this is the vision of the park that we are working towards, as Barb mentioned, over the next 10 to 15 years. And you can see in almost every case, it offers more trails, more nature, more amenities than when the park was being operated as a golf course. So where are we today? I just want to give everybody a little bit of context. Area A, that's the northeast corner of the park, that's the gateway phase. So if you have been to the Anna C. Verna playground, you have been to the first project that opens in the gateway phase. The second two projects, the Welcome Center is going to be opening this spring, and the Gateway Plaza, a new pedestrian and bike-friendly plaza at Broad and Patterson will be opening early next year. The nature phase is also underway, and you see that the first project, the 30-acre tidal wetland that is under construction. It is graded, and there are 7,000 new trees and 1,900 shrubs that have been planted there. Next spring, we're gonna see 36,000 native species that are adapted to a tidal wetland in Philadelphia in the 21st century. This is incredibly rare habitat 
And we are so lucky to be able to have that in this park. If it survives. The piece of the project that we're going to talk about today is the picnic and play phase. This project sits on the, a few of the fairways from the former golf course, and it provides the recreational amenities that we heard loud and clear from families that were needed in this park and in South Philadelphia. So that's the area and sea that you see. So the, this plan, we acknowledge, it's moving fast. And the reason it's moving fast is because you all have waited a very long time to have the resources and amenities that you need. So that's why we're so happy to open the playground this summer. You see the tidal wetland here under construction. There's 7,000 trees there. The Delaware River is now reconnected back to this park. So we're improving the stormwater. We're improving the tidal flow. We're improving the natural conditions here. And we are loading up this park with the habitat that is rare. It is hard to find on the East Coast. And it is going to be a really special opportunity for us as Philadelphians to watch come to life. So let's talk about the picnic and play phase. Here we are. This plan takes, you'll see right here, um, a little hard to tell, the Bel Air Manor. Just north of the Bel Air Manor, we have a new access area. We have parking. We have a series of berms that are planted with native grasses and meadow species in order to shelter and separate and return that Bel Air landscape to something that is more appropriate to its historic origin. We have four basketball courts, we have a spray ground, we have picnic sites, and we have another playground, and then we have five multi-purpose fields. These fields can be used for football, they can be used for soccer, they can be split in different directions, so we can have all kinds and types of play on these fields. And it's really critical that I share with you tonight that these fields are going to be lit, which is fantastic. That increases the amount of play and utilization we can have. And these fields are also gonna be performance turf. Performance turf is the artificial turf built for the 21st century. So our version of turf will have natural infill materials and will be manufactured without PFAS. And we know that this is possible because we know so many manufacturers across the country have been asking for it. So why do we want to have turf fields instead of grass fields? We know that to meet the field demand at this site, we could load up the entire FDR park and still not have enough fields to manage the demand. But we also know that the key to this project is back balancing activity, nature, and water to creating one park for all. And in order to do that, we're using performance turf because one turf field can take the same amount of playing time as three grass fields. So when you look all over the city of Philadelphia, when you go to private schools, when you go to Penn, when you look at Temple and Drexel, Every single one of those institutions have the best for their kids, have the best for their um, institutions, and they all have the same type of turf and the same um, teams helping build those fields that we have here at FDR Park. So you can get a sense from this image, we're talking about a small part of the park, just about 40 acres, out of 348 acres, and um, this part of the park is not only just the athletic amenities, but just like Anna Seaver on a playground, it is the shady spaces, the picnic areas, the parking, the um, uh, sports equipment promenade, the pl uh, playground, all of these spaces that are critical for the entire family to have a good time. Because I think most of us know what it's like to take a young child to a game and figure out what you're doing with your other kids. So we wanted to make sure that this site not only serves our young athletes, but serves our family and serves Philadelphians in general. So you can get a sense of what the experience here is like. This is not your subor suburban sports complex. This is athletic amenities integrated into nature, integrated into a park years into the future. So if you've been on social media, if you've been paying any attention to this project, you have heard some things. 
And I think you're going to hear some more things as we go on in the evening. So first thing you might hear, Philly kids don't need more sports fields. No one needs states. That's right. The other thing we hear, these kids can just play in their own neighborhoods. Here's the fact. 21,000 kids between the age of 5 and 17 live in South Philadelphia. There are only 10 public fields large enough for regulation football and soccer. One of those fields is striped in performance turf. So we have initiatives like Rebuild that are bringing investment into neighborhoods, into parks, into rec centers in the neighborhoods. We could fix up every single neighborhood field in the city and we would still have a shortage. The reality is more fields means more kids get to play. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing you might hear, the World Cup, FIFA, is taking over FDR Park. Here's the reality. The plan for FDR Park was revealed to the public in May of 2019. This was before the city of Philadelphia even had a big committee. The stadium for the World Cup is the link. FIFA has not selected a training site. FIFA has not done any kind of work here at FDR Park. Second, this plan clear cuts an old growth for us. This image is a little tough to see, but we've got handouts in the back. This is FDR Park in 1981. You can see from the buildings around it, this is an aerial source from the University of Pennsylvania. You can see the former golf course here, and you can see the tree canopy. This is not an old growth forest. No, this is a forest that is primarily made up of landscape trees planted to divide fairways for a golf course built after World War II. That is the reality. The other reality is FDR Park is a landscape that has been highly disturbed and highly altered by people. It is losing the canopy it has because of climate change, because of the species being inappropriate for our environment to begin with, and we're going to continue to lose these trees if we do not do something. So this plan, just like the tidal wetland, plants new trees, new shrubs, new perennials that are adapted for the climate that we are going to have. And just so that everybody in here knows, this work is happening all over City of Philadelphia parks. We are working today to plant and create the canopy that we have for the future. Because just doing nothing will leave us with nothing. Just don't clear cut what we Let's have. Let's also talk about this. FDR Park is the only truly wild place in Philadelphia. This plan destroys a wild refuge. Here's the fact. FDR Park is an urban park. It is part of a municipal system. It is part of a city. This is not a wildlife refuge. Our first goal, our first goal has to be to serve each other, to serve the residents of Philadelphia. And in doing that, we can still accommodate wildlife in ways that are beautiful, natural, and appropriate. But the first goal of this park is to serve Philadelphians. Here's another one. The park, the plan pays the park for park. Is this the meeting that you wanted to have? Urban edge 
We are now able to have stormwater management in these, below these parking lots. Today in FDR Park, that doesn't exist. And it doesn't exist because the parking lots are placed in areas that are too low. So this plan, where it creates parking near amenities, it elevates it and it creates a stormwater management that protects Shedro Creek, that protects Hollander Creek, that is going to protect the emergent wetland and that protects the tidal wetland. Cutting down trees creates a heat island. The reality is FDR Park is over a half mile from the city's nearest priority area. It is primarily turf. We are talking about grass. This plan results in a net gain of canopy with species that are selected to withstand the changing climate. We have hotter, wetter futures. FDR Park is more often wet. We have higher water. And what that means is we need trees and we need species that are adapted to the heat and that are adapted to having their feet wet. Here's another one. We should just do nothing. Let's leave the park alone. The fact is, FDR Park is a park that serves the entire city and particularly serves the communities most vulnerable to sea level rise. If we do nothing, most of this park will become inaccessible and retreating from 348 acres of public space, turning our backs onto people and families who need this public space, fails, our, fails the generations and the people who need it most. All right, the turf fields are toxic. We've talked a little bit about this. We are probably just going to have to agree to disagree tonight. Um, but performance turf manufacturers have recognized that the market, that parents, that coaches want to know the playing surface is safe that their kids are on. And as a result, many of these companies not only provide products that are certified by an independent lab as PFAS free, they also will test our field our exact field before it leaves the factory and comes to our site. So we will have two opportunities with a certified lab to ensure that the field that we are getting is PFAS free. Go with the research. What's the brand? All right, now, what brand? I'm going to turn it over to Matt from Ballard Star, who's going to talk us through what specifically you guys are here tonight to think about. Loud claps from the sports contingent. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm Meredith Trago from Ballard Spar, along with uh, here with my colleague. We're very happy to hear my name is Matt McClure, and we're here as Pro Bono Counsel for the Conservancy. We're very happy to hear. Louder. Sorry, we are here as Pro Bono Counsel to the Fairmont Park Conservancy. Um, the re one of the reasons we are here tonight, uh, one of the purposes for this meeting, is it serves. Uh, the purpose of being the required registered community organization meeting, which is part of the community engagement process for projects that are uh, heading to the zoning board of adjustment. Um, as many of you know, this project does involve uh, the proposed removal of uh, 48 heritage trees in the park. Um, and so we will be before the zoning board of adjustment for that application uh, next week. 64 that, trees. I'm sorry. Um, several of the trees that would otherwise be qualified as heritage trees um, have been certified by an arborist as being dead, damaged, or diseased, and then therefore are not counted towards the uh, special exception uh, requirement. So the application is for the removal of 48 trees. We will be, as I said before, the Zoning Board of Adjustment next week on Wednesday the 21st. That hearing is at 2 p.m. It is virtual. The Zoning Board of Adjustment's website has instructions on how you can register and attend that meeting. Um, but we do want to note that the removal of heritage trees is a special exception in the, in the zone code. It is not a variance. So a special exception is a permitted use that, can, that is permitted subject to certain criteria and conditions. Um, and so, again, that meeting is next Wednesday. Um, and yeah, that'll be virtual. And feel free to visit the zoning board's website for further information. Oh, sorry. Those conditions uh, are that we uh, provide tree replacement 
um, tree replacements and to uh, take out, to replace the trees that are being taken out, that we replace the trees in a certain uh, manner. Um, and that's about not so many, the number of trees is the caliber per inch that's being removed. Um, Oh, it, it equates into about 1,200 new trees? Uh, just, uh, just over 1,000. Got it, okay. Just over 1,000. Um, and then we also have to meet other uh, special exception criteria that's general to any special exception approval, and that's showing that the proposed use does not uh, create any more issues uh, or problems for public health, safety, and welfare that would be otherwise expected from that uh, proposed use in any other scenario. Um, and then lastly, we need to demonstrate that the proposed development uh, cannot be practically redesigned to avoid a uh, special exception. Another thing to uh, just to, uh, remember, who has been here to a, a variance hearing before for a zoning board? Who has been to a hearing before the zoning board when someone's asking for a variance? Good. So that is when someone is saying, please give me an exception because the zoning code does not permit what I'm going to do. This is a little bit different. The zoning code contemplates that there's gonna be tree removal. Why? We live in the city. However, there's requirements to have replacement trees, which we're doing, and Meredith explained, as well as to have a public meeting and a hearing to get community input. That's what this is about. But at the end of the day, it's a permitted use subject to having the community input in these meetings. And it is a, it is a hearing that everyone here is welcome to attend who is a resident of the city of Philadelphia who has standing, um, and that will happen again virtually, uh, which will be a hearing that's gonna be run again, just to repeat what Meredith said, at two o'clock on the 21st. Thank you. Thank you. speaker ask questions. Uh, they will have two minutes on the clock. I'll be keeping track of the clock. I'll give you one minute warning, a 30 second warning, a 10 second reminder, and then a please finish your sentence. Um, at the end of that, we'll then kind of pass the mic back to Parks and Rec, here at Park Conservancy, um, or anybody else who can kind of respond to that. Again, I'm just gonna ask, please no interruptions and comments on either side. I know that that's Hard, but I, I really just encourage us all to respect one another. Okay, so with that, we're going to start with Kat Kendon. So if, if Kat, if you want to come up, um, you want to please. because we're pushing a boulder up a hill. And our efforts are futile when the institutions tasked with stewarding our parks can move to clear-cut heritage trees in one fell swoop. I want to pause and say that I understand that the required number of replacement trees have been planted to the project, but an inch of sapling in no way equates to an inch of mature tree. About half of Philadelphia's freshly planted trees die within 10 years. So, and also it will take 40 years before the replacement trees are able to compensate for the loss of the mature tree, and we just don't have that kind of time. I'm one of the many Philadelphians involved with the implementation of the tree plan as well as the accompanying tree bill. 
The ordinance states that the applicant has demonstrated that the project cannot be practically redesigned to protect the heritage tree. Parks and Rec, you keep saying we can have both, and I agree, it's incredibly practical to save a heritage tree and invest in the maintenance of neglected sports fields across the city. They're, they're accessible to kids, so we can have both. Why should the exception be granted? Has Parks and Rec and the Conservancy proven that there is no practical way to redesign sports access? I think no. the sports teams booing. sports to youth to over 1,000 unique youth individuals in the city of Philadelphia every year, playing baseball, basketball, and flag football. FDR Park has been our home base for our baseball program for many years. Most of you know our organization. If you recall, 10 years ago this year, we were an organization that through our baseball program at FDR brought a lot of joy to the city when Monet Davis and her teammates took a team to Williamsport and, and showed off our city. It was awesome. We're really passionate about youth sports. We think that youth sports are one of the most important things that has to happen in this yeah. city. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Yeah. I appreciate, I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate yeah. my... I, I, I appreciate my new best friend over there, but let's, let's, let's everybody give me and everybody else a chance, as, as Lindsay has asked, but thank you. Um, you know, when you think about what youth sports does for children, um, you know, it teaches kids teamwork, sportsmanship, hustling, making friends, learning to win, and learning to lose. There's that... There's actually research studies out there that prove that participants in youth sports have higher school attendance and completion rates and are far more likely to exhibit growth in social emotional learning areas of academic self-efficacy, self-management, social skills, and self-confidence. Yeah. 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 FDR Park and its staff, the Friends of FDR and Fairmount Park Conservancy have been great partners to us to deliver this program for now 30 years, and we are very grateful. As an organization, we are very supportive of the plans for the redevelopment of the park. These plans allow development of great new spaces for us and others to provide this athletic programming to help the growth of the youth of Philadelphia. Further, we believe that this plan, as demonstrated by Allison this evening, allows the great coexistence of athletics, markets, the playground, and those that use the wetlands and parklands. In closing, we look forward to the progression of this redevelopment. We stand ready to, well, I was interrupted and you were noticed. So, you, I was interrupted as you remember. And we stand ready to support Parks and Rec, the Conservancy, and the city to bring this plan to its fruition and provide these great opportunities for youth Thank you. Next, I would like to 
to invite Allison Patchen. is required to allow some of these really older trees to be removed. If we rationalize cutting these trees down by saying we'll replace them, these trees, these new trees certainly will grow. But my daughter would be like 87 <laughs> before she gets to see a tree that's that size again in that spot. Um, so she certainly won't enjoy them. Maybe her grandchild will. As Kat mentioned, Philadelphia has lost a huge percent of its tree canopy over the last 30 years, and these few old trees left in the city should be preserved. As I mentioned, they take a lifetime to grow. Not every city has a large expanse of forest or woodland within its borders, but we are lucky enough to have a little right here in South Philly. It would be lovely if we could save it, but if we can't, can we like twist some of these <laughs> playing fields so that we can save some of those old trees? I really, really want everyone to be happy, and I think that we can try to find some way to do it. So let's see if we can figure out another way. I am stopping now, thank you. <laughs> that was a question. Hi, can answer that. Um, the answer is yes, we can and have actually already started the process of changing around the way this plan is laid out to accommodate high quality natural areas. And the biggest change that we made in that direction was in the removal of the top golf function and the retention of an existing high quality wetland on the far western edge of the park. That added, I think, an additional 45 acres of natural area that would be retained in its current state and improved, invasives removed, things of that nature. Um, I think that you're absolutely right. It is sad, I, I know my kids are little too, and I feel sad when I think about opportunities that I know are gonna come in the future that they are not gonna be here for. But that is to some extent the definition of hope and living in a civil society. Investing now in things that won't serve us directly, but will serve our children and our children's children. And this plan does have a focus on the future. Oh, I didn't know I had two minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, I can wrap it up there because that's really what it's about. It is hard to see change and it's hard to know that you or your kids aren't gonna be here for the thing that we know is coming that's so great. But that doesn't mean that we're not obligated as a society to plan those great things for the next generations. So, um, but I'm happy to talk to you some more afterward. Uh, look forward to it. Next question. <laughs> The next person is Andrew Friedman. Four years and began pickleball there 11 years ago. It's been, 
It's been huge. Uh, we have we started pickleball at Seeger Park 11 years ago, and it's been hugely successful. Uh, in, the, in the city of Philadelphia, there's only one place in Chestnut Hill that has dedicated pickleball courts. Seeger Park has four temporary pickleball courts. We are hoping that uh, to install uh, pickleball courts at, Seager, at FDR Park instead of the basketball courts. Basketball courts currently have 454 basketball courts in the entire city. That's according to Mike Barsoli, Director of Youth Sports in Philadelphia Parks and Recreation. Only one dedicated pickleball court in all of uh, Philadelphia. Uh, pickleball is the fastest growing sport in the United States. There's currently 8 million people playing it. It has a, it'll grow to 20 million uh, by the end of the decade. It's it, all ages. It's not just young people. It's every age. 80 it could be 65, 80 it could be families. One, one last point. Uh, pickleball, if we put in enough courts, it appears to all ages, but it also will be a revenue producer for the city because it will attract national tournaments and regional tournaments that bring revenue to the city. That's all I have to say. Delaware County to play because we don't have facilities in Philadelphia. Andrew started the meetup group for Seeger, 10th and Lombard. Uh, however, we do play down at the lakes when the weather is nice. But we understand those pickleball courts are going to be destroyed. We just want to see if we can have pickleball courts as part of the athletic fields and the athletic area. It's good for exercise. It's good for every group, every age group. It's not just for young. It's for every age group. And we thought maybe we could get some facilities like that. Thank you. And we thank you. Although they're not official, there are pickleball courts there now that are well beloved and well used. They are not currently in the scope of work that we're talking about today, right? Um, I think there will always be a home for pickleball in FDR Park. Uh, but right now, while we have pickleball courts, we do not have basketball courts. So I think we can have both, and we are going to have both, right? But I totally understand the passion and love of pickleball, and believe me, the pickleball voice is heard. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, I'd like to invite our next speaker, Abigail Miller. Thank you, thank you. Okay, my name is Abigail Miller. Okay. My name is Abigail Milder. I live in South Philadelphia. And I waited three years to speak in a public forum about this plan. Uh, community members should know that since 2019, the Parks and Recreation Commission has not held a single meeting, a single public meeting, at, in violation of the city charter. These meetings are the only forum for the public to weigh in on development projects in our parks. Imagine pushing through a quarter billion dollar plan with no accountability from the public. The Parks Department and Fairmont Park Conservancy, the Parks Department and Fairmont Park Conservancy claim they must destroy the west side of the park to save it. Save it, they say. Destroying meadows, clear cutting hundreds of trees, including protected heritage trees, to install over one million square feet of artificial turf that will pollute our air, soil, and water with PFAS and microplastics. That is a net loss for this park and the people of Philadelphia. You know that all artificial turf has PIPAs in it. Maybe call Dr. Kyla Bennett, who discovered PIPAs in turf. She told us just last week, quote, there are no brands that are PIPAs free. That is just a lie. 
when are you going to provide an independent toxicology report? If it is not toxic, then prove it. So why, why 12 tournament fields? In a word, money. In 2020, Parks conducted an inventory of all the trees at FBR Park, but not a single tree on the west side of the park. Proof that Parks saw these 180 acres as a blank slate for them to develop and monetize. This is not a blank slate. Interruptions. I am finishing. Thank you. Now talk about Let's go. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Your time's so, up. Your time's up. Proof that Park saw these 180 acres as a blank slate for them to develop and monetize. This is not a blank slate, and it is not for sale. The Olmsted brothers are long dead. Forget their legacy and focus on the needs of Philadelphians today. Leave the sports fields and hardscaping on the park's east side. Let the 80-year-old trees... Hello, hello, hello. Yes, hello. Real quick, real quick, guys. I just want to answer one portion of the question. I'm not sure where it comes from in terms of monetizing the fields and FDR. All youth organizations using fields under our control are never charged a dime. Only they the youth. They are for free. Every youth sports that uses youth. a field. Youth is a, a free. Basketball court, a gym, you have $200,000 in the budget and the FDR plan. You should, sir, you should check the budget of your own plan. Excuse me. that are be for you free right turn. now. You had your turn. Thank you. Your turn. So I will be happy to turn. talk with you as always, Abigail. I'm sure I'll see you at my next walk and talk. I love our friends together. I'll look forward and I'll see you there too. Thank you very much. So no answer. today to say I'm a big advocate of having youth sports at our our But also I am familiar with pickleball. Pickleball is a, it's it's a, a sport if you don't if you're not familiar with it, it's a sport that is similar to tennis but on smaller courts. You can include lots of courts in a small area. And it's a very good sport for senior citizens. 
and that's why I'm 63 years old now, so I'm trying to look out for some of the uh, OPs uh, as well. So, that's it. thanks, guys. What a lot of people don't know. Talk to you guys might identify it as FDR, we identify it as the Lynx. Yes. First thing. Second thing is, we watch our grandmothers, grandfathers, young kids play in that park. My grandma would take me to lunch for 15 years to McDonald's, and we would go sit out FDR Park, the Lynx, and have lunch. This park is much more than trees. It, it, whatever you want to call it, this means a lot to us. So when you talk about young kids wanting to play football, wanting to play basketball, you can't stand against that. So all the things, all, all the things I'm listening to, see, we deal with different things in our neighborhood. And I'm talking about the meadows. I'm talking about young dead bodies that we see in South Philadelphia every day. When y'all talk about issues, we talking about saving kids in our neighborhood. So, so, so this is passion for us. We're passionate about this. When y'all go back to your neighborhood, y'all talk to a guy that was out there, he said I'm from the Northwest, and I moved down to South Philly. That's great. We grew up in these neighborhoods. This means a lot to us. When I see Warren and Mr. Meadows and those guys, they're trying to save lives. So while this is a, a hobby to go, this is a lifestyle for us. And we're looking to do some great things, and we want to see basketball courts down there. We can see young black kids, white kids, and Hispanics play basketball in that park down there. Play football in that park down there. This is the things we deal with. So I say this again. While this is a hobby for y'all, this is a lifestyle for us. Doing. They paid anyone opposing the plan as white, selfish 
tree-hugging ladies trying to stop black youth from accessing quality fields. That's not the case. They also say it's only 40 acres of a large park. Well, the Amazon is big too, but if you poison the mouth of the river, it takes it all. We are all desperate to decrease youth violence, and the desperate are the easiest people to gaslight and bamboozle. Because to the starving, a bag of chips and a soda seems like a feast. But those artificial foods don't nourish you the way that greens do. And that goes for parks too. To some of you, nothing I say will matter because you want your fields. But hindsight is 2020. And in five years, when the water is contaminated, the air quality hazardous, and pediatric cancer clusters develop, will you still think it was worth it? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right. My name is Anthony Meadows, and I'm a proud South Philadelphia. I currently serve my community as president of South Philly Sigma Shark Youth Organization, and I am a firm supporter of the FDR Park Project. I support this project because it is a much needed, it is a much needed and deserved space for youth, adults, individuals, and families to utilize for various sports and training activities. How do I know this? I know this because in my experience as a youth football coach for the past 16 years, I've seen it. I've visited, coached just about every field in the city of Philadelphia. I've also coached on different fields throughout the country. And I must say, Philadelphia is behind when it comes to adequately supporting youth sports for facilities and resources, in particular field space. There are so many organizations and programs in the city that will benefit from the facilities that are proposed for FDR parks or the lakes as I grew up calling it. Many organizations are currently utilizing fields that are in less than ideal conditions for practices and games. I'm pretty sure there are separate proposals and plans in place and being put in place to upgrade parks and recreation centers across the city, and that's something I applaud. However, the FDR Park Plan is like no other in the Northeastern United States. To provide youth and families with 12 fields and facilities to hold games, tournaments, and practices is a game changer. In addition to the fields, the amenities that will be at the new FDR Park will be family friendly so that there will be some, something for all members of the family to do. If they want to go to a giant playground, or if they want to go canoeing, fishing, or hiking, or if they just want to hang out in the park, they'll be able to do so. The FDR Park plan will benefit you, the youth of Philadelphia. Our children are currently fighting battles on so many different fronts, from gun violence, social media pressures, growing up in single parent head households, food insecurities, lack of finances, bullying, lack of access to high quality education and vocational training programs. As a volunteer for youth, a youth sports organization, I believe we can help. We keep children actively engaged in organized activities. We connect youth and families with appropriate support services in our networks. We teach life lessons, provide mentorship, and give kids the opportunity to just be kids. Volunteers and youth organizations come from all walks of life. They're teachers, principals, carpenters, plumbers, Roofers, police officers, administrators, entrepreneurs, probation officers, community members, and so much more. They provide so much life experience that just can't be bought. All they want to do is help the youth. I can wholeheartedly say this will benefit the youth. Facilities such as the new FDR Park will only enhance the ability of volunteers to keep children safe, teach sports, teach commitment, and teach children how to be a part of something bigger than themselves and give them a state-of-the-art facility that they can have in their city. Thank you. as we call it, and while I'm in support of the, the new, generally the new fields and, and the new development of that space, not at the cost 
of uh, the 40 something uh, heritage trees uh, that are part of the plan to be taken down. I think we can have both. And I would ask the, um, but I, I would ask the uh, Parks and Rec and the Fairmount Park Conservancy to consider uh, amending the plan, uh, really to consider uh, uh, pickleball courts. Uh, it's a fast growing sport. Uh, played by youth and senior citizens. Uh, do we really need five full-length fields? Yeah. And I guess the, 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 the question part I do have is, it, was there any consider... Uh, sir, I... Ten seconds? I have one minute. I, I would challenge you to a game of pickleball. I think we would both enjoy it, sir. Um, <laughs> Just, my question for the Parks and Rec is, was pitbull, dedicated pickleball courts, I know there's tennis courts already existing, but they're not dedicated pickleball courts, would the Parks and Rec and the Conservancy be amenable to factoring that into the revised plan? Thank you. Somebody mentioned earlier that in Chestnut Hill there are pickleball courts, and there are a number of centers that are converting their tennis courts and striping it so close and actually utilize pickleball courts. And pickleball courts will exist at FDR. So there is opportunities throughout the city to use pickleball and it will increase as the, uh, the demand increases. So that will continue. them. Um, if you're cutting down our big trees and you're putting in plastic grass, you're accelerating climate change, which is making this world less hospitable for all of our children. And to do that is in direct conflict with the Philly Tree Plan, which was composed by thousands of Philadelphians across this city that explicitly expressed that the preservation of our current canopy, our existing canopy, is of primary importance. How do you undermine this goal? Number two, every year it's getting hotter. I'm gonna quote an article from Sports Illustrated magazine about 14 kids that died on, of heat stroke on these synthetic fields in the last three years. Well, they don't want, you don't want them to die of heat stroke as well, okay? This is a quote. This is a quote. Well, thank you, I hear you. I hear you, I'm happy to give you this mic when I'm done. I'm happy to give it to you. All right, one second. The quote, a danger of, the danger of climate change is compounded by the turf fields, often installed by schools to save water and money. Turf feeds quickly, the surface underfoot could be as hot as 160 degrees. 14 children have died. This is insane to ask children to play on these fields. You will have less time. You will have less time to play on the so-called performance turf because you will kill children if you put it on the Stay with me. If you do not know your supplier, you do not know that it is PFAS free. That is a statement, not a question. Number four. Number four. We have more space for fields in this city. Let's get them. Let's build them in places where we don't have to bulldoze our natural lands to make them happen. This is a flood zone. In an age of rising tides, it makes no sense. Thank you. I love it. Please make sure that either one of those pictures has your 
Oh, Joey. Joey, come over here for a sec. Come on. So, what do you think about, what do you think about the meeting? Trying to just walk away from the noise. I think there's a lot more to, like, all this than I originally thought. Like, it's a lot harder for things to really change in government. And, um... I think it was a little saddening to see. It's a little what? It's a little saddening to see yes. all this happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. It's. It does make me. Look, I get it. I get the desperation in the city, and these folks really want more fields and more facilities for their their kids, and they they make a, an A to B connection with gun violence, and I I respect that. I just wish it wasn't on artificial turf because that's a non-starter for all of us. I just think it's more about protecting the environment for the future versus like them seeing a space they want right now. That's so right. It's a little different. But, yeah, um, different timelines. Different timelines. Good to see you, Joey. All righty, let's see. Hey, do you, you what, what did you think of this meeting? Hmm, rough. It was pretty rough, right? It was, really it was rough. rough for me. What what was rough about it for you? Uh, I don't know why nobody, other parts in the next group, should have been talking about wanting this money. It's too much money in one place. Say again. The, it's too much money in one place. Yes, this. quarter quarter billion dollars, or about a hundred million left unspent. I think they've already spent almost a hundred million. I wish other parts were, were here asking for that money. Yes, yes. Well, I tell you, we've been speaking to some council me- persons, ca- council members, and they want that money for their districts, and I, you know, it's a quarter billion dollars, so a lot of money. Yeah, that's, that's, the, big that's the big issue. Thank thank you so much. Dom. Hey, you're on live. No what did, choice. What did, no, you have no choice. What did you think of the meeting? I thought it was, uh, they really polarized it. They really polarized yes. the situation. Yes. And really what I think about is there was discussions about what about the kids. And I think both sides are trying to address it. Yes. Which is the safety of children is very important. Of course. And what's in these curves will affect the safety of our children, and we can't allow that to happen. We also want people to have their athletic fields. We're not saying we don't want that for our children as well, but there's other ways of doing it, and not taking away the tree canopy, which is very important to the health and safety of our children, and to give us all a healthy Philadelphia. We we need this in both ways. We, We need to rethink this whole plan. And it seems like... And yeah, we don't we don't have time. It's like we're mm-hmm. destroying... They, they made a big production of like, this is not myth-busting. This is not old growth. Yeah, no one's saying it's old growth. It's 80-year-old trees. That's 80 years we don't have time to lose. We don't have time. Right? You can't cut these... We can't keep cutting trees If, if these don't... trees are not going to survive in the long term, the solution is to plant different species at their feet and let nature gradually, you know, take away those great maples if, if they're not meant to be. And we're yeah. talking about waterways here. Yeah. What are we doing putting plastic all over? Oh my god. I mean, it was like the, half of the discussion was about the waterways. That's and right. And now we want to pollute them. That's right. It's it really makes a, it, it makes it no sense. Make any sense. They they say it's green, but yeah. they're just going to they're just going to pollute the whole park. Thank you, Thank you honey. Jackson. Hey. So, what do you think? That was gnarly. That, that was, was gnarly, like, yeah. A lot of false dichotomies that were set up. Um, the Parks Department came in hot with their, like, myths. That was oh, my God. I felt like yelling, that's so 2020. I mean, <laughs> FIFA? Who the fuck's yeah. talking about FIFA it, anymore? I, I figured I would be bullshitted. Um, I just didn't know how. And, um, yeah, so yeah, know. yeah. Ah, yes. Okay, folks. 
place is emptying out. Time to vote. I'm going to sign off. So, see y'all. Thanks for tuning in.